This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship with First Presbyterian Church Covington. Know that you are loved, you are valued, and you are welcome just the way you are. We welcome the young and the old. We welcome you if you are worshiping with us for the very first time this morning or you grew up in this church. We welcome the energized and the tired. We welcome families of all shapes and sizes. We welcome the happy-hearted. We welcome those for whom are grieving this day. We welcome you if you have it all together, and we welcome you if life is simply a mess. We are grateful that the Spirit led you to gather in this space, in person and online, to worship this Sabbath day. For all worshiping in person, your worship guides are in hand. Your hymnals are in the pew pockets in front of you. We encourage you to fill out the contact card if you are visiting with us today or with a family member. Maybe you're a church member and have some new information for us, a new email address. So we hope that you will fill out the contact card located in the pew pockets. For all worshiping online, we welcome you, whether it's on Sunday morning, right here and now, or on Wednesday afternoon on your walk. We are grateful you're part of our worshiping community. Your worship guide and hymns are on the front page of our website under worship resources. And we do invite you to say hello in the chat feature on Facebook so we can greet you and call you by name. I do have a few announcements for us this morning. You might note in your worship guide that we are planning a church family retreat. A Saturday where we all get to play together and that we are really, really excited about our retreat planning team and Pastor Aaron and our keynote speaker, Alyssa Castilla, who is our former um, seminary intern, is going to keynote for us. And so we hope that all of you will say yes to coming to our church retreat. More details, as I said, are in the worship guide. We continue to need a few more volunteers for our Presbytery meeting. We are hosting all of the Presbyterian churches, churches in the greater Atlanta area in just a few weeks. And we need a few more hands on deck. So if you are able to help us out on that Saturday, just drop a note in the offering plate or let me know following worship. And we will find you somewhere to be. Today, our children will be helping lead our sending hymn at the conclusion of our worship service. So the children that go down to the nursery with Pastor Aaron following our moment with the children, then the child care workers will bring you up. We'll bring you back to the sanctuary. So parents, don't worry there. But for children, first grade and older, remaining in the pews, wiggling and giggling during worship, before um, the last hymn, we ask you to go back to the narthex, which is the entrance of the church, to get your rhythm instruments. Okay, so I'll remind you later on in this service as well. At the conclusion of our worship service, we will have our annual meeting. This is a congregational meeting where we will celebrate the life of our church. I will give kind of a state of address of the church during that time. And you'll also hear about our um, 2022 and 2023 budget, and you will vote on terms of call. For all visiting, um, you are not able to vote, so you have permission to leave. But I encourage you to stay and hear about what's happening in the life of our church. A lot of exciting things. Um, I said state of address, state of the church. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't write that specifically down. State of the church. Um, we also today have the holy, holy honor of ordaining and installing our elders and deacons. And so what a special and glorious day it is in the life of the Church of First Presbyterian Covington. Let us now turn our hearts and minds to worship using our worship guide, using the call to worship. I invite you to stand. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord. As we behold the beauty of God's temple, we see God's face. God is our shelter and our shade. We will sing to the God of our salvation.
friends, Christ calls us to follow, knowing that we are human. Jesus knows we are not perfect. He knows we will not always get it right. All he asks is that we try, learn, and try again. Let us now go to God telling how we have tried and failed, that God may teach us what we must learn. We pray now together our community confession. Christ, our Messiah, you call us to fish for people, but we are hesitant to leave our boats. We are afraid to let go of the things we hoard, believing they make us secure. We are afraid to put our trust in you, afraid to follow, afraid we will fail. Forgive us, transform our fear into faithfulness, and enable us to walk with you, that we may be part of your work in the world. Amen. Just as Jesus called the disciples, so Christ calls us. Forgiven of our sin and free to serve, let us answer Christ's call. Christ calls us, forgives us, heals us, and teaches us. Thanks be to God. Church, we are forgiven. We are free to try again. My friends, God extends peace to us through Jesus Christ. And we are called and invited to extend that peace to one another. So I invite you to join me in dancing with the Spirit this morning and place your hands over your heart. Extend your hands forward, hands over your heart, and extend them out into the world and do a little shimmy to say hello to your neighbor. Please join me in saying, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Amen. You may be seated. We'd like to invite the children to come forward and have a seat on one of the colored dots. Good morning, friends. We're excited to hear y'all make music later in the service with us. Good morning. All right, so I've got a prop up here. What do you think this boat is doing up here? What is fishing? Very good. People are going fishing in today's story for sure. Jesus is with the disciples, and they're by the shore. They're by a lake, and there are some, there are um, two men in the boat And their names are Simon, Peter, and Andrew. And Jesus comes up to the shore and says, Hey guys, come follow me. I will make you fishers of people. And so they join him. They are fishermen. That's how they spend spend their days. That's how they make money. That's how they get their food. And so Jesus says, guess what? I want you to leave all of that behind. And I want you to follow me. So he invites Simon, Peter, and Andrew, and he invites James and John. And guess what? What do you think they said when Jesus said, follow me? Do you think they went with him? They did. They did. They went with him and followed him. And guess what that made them? That made them disciples. 
So they followed Jesus in his ministry, and they walked with him many, many miles, and they told Jesus about the, they told friends about Jesus and about the love of God. So I want you to remember today about this story that Jesus tells us to follow me, and that also includes us. We are to follow Jesus, to love Jesus, and to show others about God's love. So I want you to pray um, to God and the church. I will pray to God, and you and the church can pray to God too. Dear God, we thank you for the first disciples. We thank you for the call to follow you. Amen. All right, if you are going to the nursery, you can follow me. And if you are staying in the pews, you can go back to wiggle and giggle in the pews.
please pray with me? Here we are, Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from 1 Corinthians. We are in chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. Here now our first reading. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all be in agreement and that there will be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind, in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved it is the power of God. This ends our first reading. Our second reading is found in the Gospel of Matthew. We're in chapter 4, and I will be reading from the Common English Bible, which is a little bit different than the NRSV translation in your pew, your pew Bibles, but you are still invited to follow along. This is Matthew 4, verses 12 through 23. Hear now the word of the Lord. Now when Jesus heard that John was arrested, he went to Galilee, he left Nazareth and settled in Capernaum, which lies along the sea in the area of Zebulun and Natali. This fulfilled what the Isaiah the prophet said, Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, along the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who lived in the dark have seen a great light, and a light has come to those who lived in the region and in the shadow of death. From that time, Jesus began to announce, change your hearts and lives. Here comes the kingdom of heaven. As Jesus walked alongside the Galilee Sea, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew throwing fishing nets into the sea because they were fishermen. Come, follow me, he said and I'll show you how to fish for people. Right away, they left their nets and followed him. Continuing on, he saw another set of brothers, John, uh, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in the boat with Zebedee, their father, repairing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus traveled throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues. He announced the good news of the kingdom, and he healed every disease and sickness among the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reverend Dr. Jerry Paris Perkins stood in the pulpit at First Presbyterian Church Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and echoed the words of Lutheran theologian Martin Marty. There are two ways the church ministers to the world. Comfort the afflicted 
and afflict the comfortable. The very heart of the church of Jesus Christ and its primary calling of church leaders and her people is to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. These very words have been tattooed on my heart ever since that first day I heard them in Tuscaloosa when I was ordained as a minister and installed as associate pastor of First Presbyterian Church, T-Town. I have been thinking about my own ordination vows as we participate today in the ordination and installation of our elders and deacons. Likewise, I've been reflecting on Jerry's words of comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable in relationship to Jesus' call to the first disciples in Matthew to follow me. Jesus says, change your hearts and lives. Here is the kingdom of heaven. Come, follow me. I'll show you how to fish for people. Thus the question before us today as we seek to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ is what does it mean to follow Jesus? What does it mean, church, to follow Jesus? First and foremost, we must recognize following Jesus is God's divine initiative. In fact, the call to discipleship is less about the decision of the follower and more so it is the commanding act of Jesus. And yet at the same time, it is a decision before each and every one of us to make every moment of our lives to come and follow me. In other words, church, God leads and we follow. Joan Gray writes in her book, Spiritual Leadership for Church Officers, a book all of our elders and deacons have studied. She writes, my husband and I took dance lessons once. I wanted to learn all the marvelous dance moves that you see in the old movies. She writes that her dream hit a major snag. However, because when both of them were dancing, they were both trying to take the lead. We stepped all over each other's feet. And the dancing lessons, they got us nowhere. Leading and following are just as important in things spiritual as they are in dancing. God is to do the leading and we, church, are to do the following. Often, however, we tend to think we do the leading. And we just expect God to follow along. God is to be the line leader of our lives. So now that we've established who is leading us, we can unpack the question of what does it mean to follow our divine leader. In our gospel text today, Jesus has already been baptized. He spent time tempted in the wilderness. And he has just heard the breaking news that John has been arrested. John the Baptist has been arrested for his bold preaching about Jesus. So Jesus hears this news, and Jesus decides to withdraw. So he goes to Galilee, sparking his world tour from that day and forevermore. And along the way, calling ordinary people to come and follow me. Jesus basically says, let's go. 
follow me. What is cannot be anymore. It is time to disrupt the powers at be, the oppressive economic system, the status quo. It is time to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. Come, follow me, and I will show you the way. Beloved, you are to be fishers of people. Come and follow. David Luce suggests what it means to be fishers of people is all about relationships. That Jesus calls his first disciples into relationship with himself, with each other, and with the various people that they will meet over the next few years and indeed into the rest of their lives. Jesus called these ordinary people right in the middle of their ordinary lives to be in relationship with ordinary people all around them. And through those relationships, Jesus does extraordinary things. So what does it mean to follow the line leader? To be in relationship with Jesus. To be in relationship with one another to be in relationship with the ones we love, and to be in relationship with the ones we ought to love. For we are one body, many gifts, many members. This means we too should be emboldened to drop our nets and to join the Jesus movement of relationship building of comforting those who have been shut out, beaten down, belittled, marginalized, and silenced, and say to them, and to you and to me, you belong. Furthermore, we are to follow Jesus in proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, even if it means causing a little bit of trouble. Because the second half is afflicting the comfortable. God leads, we follow. And we follow by getting to know Jesus and getting to know one another. Oh, but church, what happens when the body is broken? When we as the church, or we as servant leaders, or as disciples of Jesus Christ out in the world, or as a community, what happens when we when we can't get along or have different understandings or visions about what it means to faithfully follow Jesus. If we're honest with ourselves, we know that conflict is inevitable in all aspects of our lives. There will be division. There will be quarrels. And we know this is true. We know this is true by what Paul experienced in Corinth. We know this is true, my friends, because of present-day debates amongst faith traditions or in the political sphere, and so on and so on. So what does it mean to follow Jesus in times of high tension, when the temperature in the room is hot, when conflict is the elephant right there? in the workplace, around the session table, in our marriages, in our communities, in the church, at the dinner table? What happens when the temperature in the room is hot? Well, my friends, we can glean from the wisdom from what Paul writes to the Corinthians today. You see, the church of Corinth had Started, started to form competing groups. We would never do that. I know. Cliques, parties, social groups. Well, a result of these silos within the body, various leaders started to emerge. And every clique, per se, had their, had their own leader over the other. I belong to. Well, I belong to. Basically, they had forgotten that God is the Lord of the dance. So Paul sees this problem and steps in as conflict mediator to remind the body that they only belong to God. Amen? Not to the groups, 
that they have created by their own doing, such as party affiliation or membership status. They belong to God, and they are to be unified as the body of Christ. And this does not mean uniformity, but a deeper unity that transcends the diversity of differing gifts in the one body of Christ. Belonging to God and to the unified and unified as the body of Christ does not mean mere tolerance, but to love and to learn and to unlearn from one another, even through tension, differences, and fracture. The church, uh, disciples of Jesus Christ, are to be unified by one common gospel, one common baptism. In the Presbyterian Church, a word our elders and deacons have heard me say on repeat over our time of officer training is mutual forbearance. Mutual, mutual forbearance is applicable for church leadership on session, in friendship matters, family dynamics, and conflicts at work. Mutual forbearance is also called holy Forbearance, it is a faithful witness. It is the faithful witness in times of disagreement. It is being able to recognize differences and continue to work together in unity, seeking to see the divine in one another. We see this in Corinthians and throughout the scriptures. To the church in Ephesus, it is written, I beg you, to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing to, bearing to one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Church, here it is. As God chooses to reveal God's self to us through the ministry of Jesus Christ, this epiphany, Jesus says, follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. Change your hearts and lives. Here comes the kingdom of heaven. I will take the lead, Jesus says. Get to know me and get to know one another. Comfort the afflicted. Afflict the comfortable and work for unity as the body of Christ on the good and the bad days. May it be so.
Amen. You may be seated. I now invite forward Tom Cruise, Nicole Howell, Doug Bolton, Dana Hall, and Jim Stillerman, and Mary Catherine Wisnett. Y'all can face us. <laughs> you can face us. Y'all can turn. There we go. We didn't practice, folks. We're going by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we'll turn you in a minute. <laughs> Hear these words of Scripture. There are a variety of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is to be accomplished. To each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together, we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. We are all called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling to be disciples of Jesus Christ and servants of the Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling elders, and as ministers of word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us. Through ordination, God provides for acts of care and compassion in the world, for the ordering and governance of the church, and for the preaching of the word and celebration of the sacraments. Representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the session of Covington First Presbyterian Church now ordains Dana Hall and Tom Cruise to ministry as deacons and ordains Nikhil Howe and Mary Christian, Mary Catherine, excuse me, Wisnett to ministry as ruling elders and installs them to active service in this congregation. The session also installs to active service those who have been previously ordained as ruling elders, Charles Artis, Doug Bolton, and Jim Stillerman. I now invite the congregation to stand. As God calls some to particular forms of ministry, God calls us all to bear gladly the yoke of Christ given in the covenant of baptism. Let us therefore reaffirm our baptismal vows, renouncing all that opposes God and God's rule, and affirming the faith of the Holy Catholic Church. So trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If, say, please, if so, please say, I do. I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, please say, I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, please say, I will, with God's help. I will, with God's help. With the whole church, let us now confess our faith together, using the words of the Apostles' Creed found in your worship guide. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated. I will now turn to you all and ask you the constitutional questions. So in baptism, you were claimed by the love of God, clothed in the grace of Jesus Christ, and anointed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit to share Christ's mission in the world. Now you 
are called through the voice of the church to new service and ministry in Jesus' name. In accordance with the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church USA, show your commitment to this calling by responding to these questions. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior? Acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If so, please say, I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ and the church universal and God's word to you? If so, please say, I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? If, say, if so, please say, I do and I will. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our, confes by our confessions? If so, please say, I will. Will you be governed by the church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subjecting, subject to the order of God's word and spirit? If so, please say, I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, to love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? If so, please say, I will. And do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church, if so, please say, I do. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? If so, please say, I will. Tom and Dana, as deacons, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? And for our elders, will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If you will, say, I will. Do we, the congregation, members of this church, accept Charles Artist, Doug Bolton, Tom Cruise, Nicole Howe, Dana Hall, Jim Stillerman, and Mary Catherine Wisnett, chosen by God through the voice of the congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If you agree, please say we do. Amen. Do we agree to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us serving Jesus Christ? We alone, who alone is head of church. If you agree, please say we do. I now invite any ordained um, elders, ruling elders out in the congregation in the choir loft to come for the laying on of hands. Teaching and ruling elders in the PCUSA are invited to come forward. I do ask that you are mindful and you extend your full hand as we do the laying on of hands. But I invite you to come now and I encourage you all to all stand right here and they will come. Y'all can stand in front of them, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise. Throughout the ages and in every place, you have chosen servants from among your people to point the way to salvation by your grace. We are grateful for ancestors in the faith who followed without fear, placing their trust in you alone, for judges and monarchs who ruled in righteousness and peace, for prophets and apostles who spoke your bold words of mercy and of truth, for leaders and teachers in every age who have nurtured your people in faith and faithfulness. Above all, we praise you for Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve, 
and to give his life to set others free. Anointed by your Holy Spirit, he proclaimed your reign on earth, revealing your saving love in all he said and did. For those newly ordained today, gracious God, pour out your spirit upon your servants whom you've called by baptism as your own. Grant them the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. And for those previously ordained and now being installed, gracious God, we also give thanks for their servant leadership as they continue in ministry to which you have called them. Help them to rely on the gifts of your spirit and to follow Christ faithfully into this calling. So gracious God, pour out your spirit of power and truth upon the whole church that we may be for you a holy people, baptized to serve you in the world, sustain your church in ministry, ground us in the gospel, secure our hope in Christ, strengthening our service to the outcast and increase our love for one another. Show us the transforming power of your grace in our life together, that we may be effective servants of the gospel, offering a compelling witness in the world to the good news of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated, congregation, and I invite our elders and deacons to stay. Y'all can turn back this way. <laughs> Charles, Tom, Nicole, Doug, Dana, Jim, and Mary Catherine, you are deacons and ruling elders ordained to ministries of service and governance in the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Amen. We welcome you to this high and holy calling, this messy thing we call church. It is a wild and wondrous gift to serve the people of God. So welcome spiritual leaders into spiritual leadership. You're the backbone, the hands, the feet, the brain, the stomach, all. Most importantly, you're the heart. So remember your holy words from yesterday. May they be your breath prayer as we run together this race before us as the church of Jesus Christ. Please hear this scripture as a charge to you today, remembering that God doesn't call the equipped, God equips the called. Above all, maintain love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Christ Jesus. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. You may now turn to the congregation. And to the congregation, Neely and I take the same charge. So <laughs> hear, this, hear this as your charge this morning from 1 Peter. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God, so that, so that they must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And church, can we say amen as we welcome them into servant leadership? Amen. amen. I, invite, I now invite you to stand and join in the hymn in the bulletin. Very good. Congratulations, Jim.
you may be seated. Let us now return a portion of the gifts we have been given to Christ's ministry and to those most in need through the collection of our tithes and gifts. may be seated and I invite all children to head to the narthex to get ready for our sending hymn as we pray our prayer of gratitude. Church, we have so much to be thankful for, so for our prayer of gratitude, we invite you to lift up a one-word prayer as we give thanks to God this day. I will start us and then it's kind of like popcorn sharing your one-word prayer of gratitude and then I will close us. Let us pray. On this day, on this high holy day, O oh God, we give thanks for the saints before us. We are grateful for those who have walked alongside us on our journeys of faith that lead us to moments of saying, yes, I will follow you, O oh God. So thank you for the people and the experience in, in our lives that have called us to this very space on this very day, it is with joy we lift up our prayers of gratitude for how you have revealed yourself to us, God, this day. Hear our prayers. Hear our prayers, O God, and all God's children say, Amen. Amen.
left the back of the church. <laughs> I don't know where they went. <laughs> Can someone get them? <laughs> Yeah, Aubrey's right there. Aubrey's got him. Okay, yes. all right. <laughs> so while, while the children are getting their instruments, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a background on this last hymn. We started out today's worship service with a hymn that was written nearly 500 years ago. And then we sang uh, our middle hymn today was a far more contemporary hymn. And this hymn is actually... Uh, helping us join together with all of our brothers and sisters all over the world. So I invite you in the spirit of learning something new to sing with zest, sing with gusto, sing out. We will go rejoicing on this less than sunshiny day, but we will nonetheless go rejoicing for this beautiful Holy Sabbath day. Okay? Uh, Miriam, are the children <laughs> ready? Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. <laughs> I promise you it will be worth the wait. Sees a humbana ye, whoa, 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 sees a humbana ye. Sees a humbana ye, whoa, whoa. Wo sees a humba na ye. Gonshla winja hula. Sees a humba na ye. Gonshla winja hula. Sees a humba na ye. We will walk with God, my brothers. We will walk with God. We will walk with God, my sisters, we will walk with God. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will walk with my, my brothers, we will walk with God. We will walk with God, my sisters, we will walk with God. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. Everybody sing. We will walk with God, my brothers, we will walk with God. We will walk with God, my sisters, we will walk with God. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Church, I'd like to call to order our annual meeting of the Congregation of First Presbyterian Church, Covington, Georgia. Clerk, do we have a quorum? Thank you. Let us pray. Loving God, we gather in holy fellowship to conduct the business of the church. We recognize first and foremost that you are the head of the church. We rejoice in being the priesthood of all believers as we faithfully seek to carry out the worship and mission of your people. Dwell with us here and now, and remind us that before we can do the work of the church, we must be the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. My friends, it has been three years since you called me as your pastor of First Presbyterian Church, Covington. In December of 2019, I stood in the pulpit right here for the very first time. You may recall these words. Roger Nishioka one Sunday had a little girl share a concern for her pet turtle, for her pet turtle was sick. So they prayed for Leslie's turtle. And after worship, Roger and Leslie, they were talking in the center aisle, and Roger asked Leslie, how can you tell that a turtle is sick? 
She rolled her eyes and put her hands on her hip at the ridiculous adult-type question and said, because he's moving so slow. <laughs> at that moment, a visitor, another little girl, ran right smack in between them. And sassy little Leslie had her hands back on her hips and said, hey, hey you, you stop right there. Roger was so worried what was going to come out of Leslie's mouth. Leslie looked at that little girl and said, in my church, we don't run like that. She took the little girl by the hand and she said, in my church, we run together. And they went skipping all up and down the pews, hand in hand. It has been a true joy, running Praying, dancing, singing, laughing, crying, eating, teaching, and serving together. Thank you to our church officers, to our church staff, and to you, the congregation, for your grace, your truth, your imagination, love, wisdom, and willingness to embrace that we are indeed a people who recognize we are works in progress, faithfully seeking to participate in God's activity in our church, lives, and community. So I share with you a few highlights from 2022. First and foremost, can I get an amen for all of our new church staff? <laughs> amen for our associate pastor, Aaron, our director of music and worship arts, Alicia, and our Director of Communications and Operations, Catherine. It is an honor to serve alongside them and Alice and Penny as we seek to be faithful disciples of the Church of Jesus Christ. This past year, we also ordained and installed deacons into our church governing body for the first time in a long time. So what a gift it has been for our pastoral care teams and our faith and fellowship teams. Church, we have grown in a plethora of ways. You saw it right here before your eyes in acolyte ministry, children's ministry, puppet ministry, choir, and we can't forget these choir robes this past year. And we rejoice, my friends. We rejoice in expanding our membership as well as having 35 active visitors currently on our rolls. We have had the opportunity to take baptismal vows, to break bread around the Lord's table and its soul feast with that mighty chili cook-off. We've hosted heavenly prep and had hard conversations about death, and we've grieved together the loss of church family, remembering and giving thanks for their faithful discipleship. We rejoice in our calling to witness and serve through opportunities like the sandwich ministry and Meals on Wheels and the Blood Drive, Partnerships with Fairview Elementary and Grace United Methodist Church and the Food Pantry and Change the World Day. This past year, we have studied together, prayed together, and yes, we have played together at an epic vacation Bible school. We've expanded worship opportunities with Kirk and the Tartan, Stillman Choir, Blessing of the Animals, Campfire Church, Lessons and Carols, the Children's Christmas Pageant, Ambassador Choir Concerts and Worship Arts. We've added interest ministries, the Advent Workshop, Belief in Beer, the Garden Club. And my friends, our stewardship campaign, we created the first narrative budget. Hallelujah. 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 That we have seen in a while. And our pledges have grown Thank you. Thank you for being you and saying yes to being the Church of Jesus Christ at First Presbyterian Church Covington. We've said yes to a two-year process with the Lilly Endowment in the Black Mountain School of Theology to proclaim that we are a thriving congregation and we want to continue to move forward. So you will continue to see the efforts and our work with Montreat in that, um, that grant that we were given, and we're the only church in Georgia that is participating in that two-year process. Thanks be to God. As we look to a new year, as we look to be faithful stewards of our time, our talents, our treasures, and our testimonies, we are excited about several opportunities to come. First, Presbytery. Everybody get excited. <laughs> 
And today we started a brand new Sunday school class where I was overwhelmed with the attendance. We're going to start grief support groups and we have a church retreat coming up and you better start to practice your talent because we're having a First Presbyterian Church talent show. And Tenebrae this Lent, we're going to go again with VBS. We're going to roll out our endowment legacy giving opportunities and we're going to go to Montreat with music and worship and with the youth of our church. What a joy it is to be a part of the story of what God is doing here. Robert, Caitly, Paisley, Mary Rents, and I are grateful to call this church family home. And may we all continue to participate in the life and ministry of FPC, hand in hand, running together, seeking God's guidance in all and through all. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to the back of our worship guide where you will see our leadership for 2023 and you will see the various ministries that they are leading. So you can take note there and please be in prayer for them. I'm now going to call for recess of the meeting of the annual meeting um, so we can go into the annual meeting of the corporation. So now we are in the annual meeting of the corporation clerk and a call to order. Thank you all. The business of the corporation is to announce our corporate officers for 2023. Our president is Curtis Watson, secretary John McCarthy, treasurer Bob Tabb. Trustees of the corporation are the current elders on the session. So we give thanks for them and their service. We do have to have a motion to adjourn the annual meeting of the corporation. Do I have a motion? A second? All in favor? All opposed? We'll now resume the annual meeting of the congregation. And I call Bob Tabb to the mic for the financial information overview. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, well, I appreciate that because... I don't hear so well anymore, and I'm going to talk, but really fast. If I stay more than a minute up here, you have the right to yell at me, okay? All right, so first of all, she told you about the narrative budget. It's online, or you can get in the office. I see people already looking. All right, 2022 financial information. We pledged and gave over $430,000 on a budget that we anticipated getting $400,000. That's thirty thousand dollars more than we thought we'd get amen amen <laughs> now we spent more too if you've been looking at the building stan hall and his group they have been doing things to this church you just wouldn't believe so we have a full staff we have a lot more programs and we spent some more so we had a deficit in 2022 of 9400 dollars 23 we're anticipating our revenue to be more than four hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's an increase of $50,000 more than last year. We're increasing our spending on uh, a staff. We have full staff. We, we have additional charges for health and other presbytery costs. We have spent more, we're spending more on education, witness, and worship. So we're spending more. We have, we're blessed by, by what we have. One final note. I've been on the finance team for five years, and this is the largest budget and the most anticipated revenue I have seen. We're blessed to have a growing church, and I'm excited to see the rest of 2023, the future of SPC. So we have one final order of business, and that's the vote on the terms of Reverend Lane's next year, this year. So we have to ask her to leave. Where is she? Oh. Uh, no, <laughs> no, that was just my, okay, now this part's a different thing, so do you want to, uh, okay, the details, okay, so I don't think you have this, but her salary was increased by 3.9% this year, that was the only raise that we gave any staff. Her salary's 45240 housing's 35000 and then there's all the other stuff, okay? So for a total package of $129,372. Is there any question about that? Good, because I don't have the answers. <laughs> Just add there, if 
y'all received the budget, the food for the group budget? They oh. They've been passed out. I knew they were available. And the, um, if somebody could get them out of the uh, printer room, possibly. Well, maybe get, get them on the way out. And then you can get them on your way out and you save the budget. Okay. They should have been passed out before, sir. So. Okay. Sorry about well, that. Having heard Pastor Crimson call. Come over here. I thought I was pretty loud. Closer. <laughs> having heard the pastor's terms of call, having no further questions, the session of Covington First Presbyterian Church moves to accept these terms. Coming from session, there is no session, re no second required. So I'll ask all who are in favor of accepting the pastor's terms of call, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Terms of call have been passed. Please return the pastor. All right, so when she comes in, I hope we all stand up and give her a round of applause. That will tell her what she needs to know. I want to say one thing. If, if, she, if we were a Methodist, she'd probably be on her last year. So we got her a long time. God bless you. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn our meeting? A second? All in favor? All opposed? We will conclude our meeting as well as our time of worship this morning if you'll stand and receive the benediction. Church, as you go from this place, may you remember to answer the call and follow Jesus. Jesus is the Lord of the dance. We are to follow, to comfort the afflicted, and to afflict the comfortable, and to work together for the unity of the body of Christ. So as you go, may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you, and all God's children say, Amen. Amen.